For a man's labor also is a commodity exchangeable for benefit as well as any other thing. Thomas Hobbes, Leviathan. Hi again and welcome back. Sancho takes this new topic, Christian morality, as a different line of inquiry. Once again, he mixes up his vocabulary. I would like your grace to absolve a doubt that has come to mind. Don Quixote corrects him. Resolve, you mean to say. Sancho asks about whatever became of those Caesars. Don Quixote says that the pagans are all in hell and that the Christians, if they were good Christians, are in purgatory or heaven. This hints at the famous controversy over the fate of good pagans who died before Christ, but it also alludes to the modern debate over purgatory, which distinguished Protestantism from Catholicism. Note how moral, theological even, this chapter has now become. But don't miss the humor here. Sancho pushes his master, asking specifically what happened to the actual body parts of the Caesars and whether or not they became sacred objects like those that now attract Christian pilgrims. Don Quixote seems too mesmerized by history's examples to understand the gist of Sancho's question. With Caesars still in his mind, the knight muses that Julius Caesar's ashes were placed at the top of an extraordinarily large stone pyramid, which is the obelisk known today as St. Peter's Needle. He also mentions that Hadrian was buried in what is today the Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome. By the way, this building served as a refuge for Pope Clement VII during the sack of Rome by Charles V's troops in 1527, an event which the emperor's triumphant tour of 1536 was supposed to have ameliorated. Sancho cuts to the chase. Which is the greater deed, to raise a dead man or to kill a giant? Don Quixote affirms, to raise a dead man. Did you know the news of the shameful sack of Rome carried out by the troops of Emperor Charles V in 1527 reached Spain precisely during the celebration of the birth of his son, the future King Philip II. This transformed a moment of heroic national joy into a dark and tragic omen. Remember how near the end of part one, Sancho got the supposedly enchanted Don Quixote to admit that he had to release major waters? Well, here, Sancho is again pleased with himself for managing to undercut Don Quixote's chivalric fantasy. Now I've got you. He suggests that they should try to be saints rather than knights because the chains of a couple of tortured martyrs or two dozen self-lashings are more esteemed by God than 2,000 lance thrusts by military heroes. Don Quixote admits that Sancho is right, but he says that not all of us can be martyrs. Besides, he says, chivalry is a religion, and there are mounted saints in the glory of heaven. Which saints are these? Think about it. We'll find out much later. During the moral discussion between the Hidalgo and his squire regarding Don Quixote's profession, what does Sancho suggest? A, that they become saints instead of knights. B, that they become Muslims instead of Christians. C, that they become dukes instead of peasants. Correct answer, A, that they become saints instead of knights. The heroes travel on without incident for a couple of days, and then they arrive once again at nightfall at the great city of El Toboso. To tell the truth, El Toboso is not a great city, but rather a tiny insignificant town. Or is it? The chapter ends with Don Quixote elated by the sight of El Toboso, but Sancho is depressed because now he has a serious problem. Don Quixote's spirit was joyful and Sancho's was saddened because he did not know which house belonged to Dulcinea, nor had he seen it in all his life. Uh-oh. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.